Is that it? Yeah. Here we have this, this bunch of huge megaliths that were dragged from God knows where and placed in, in, in a pattern, uh, a sort of center point of the whole area. It's essential that we do not disturb the stones, we don't touch anything, we just look at them. Because the alignments are there and they've been there for thousands of years, undisturbed, and we can use them to date this place. A group of archaeologists led by Fred Wendorf called the Combined Prehistoric Expedition, by chance found some pottery shards at Napta Playa. They thought that the megaliths were just outcrops of rock. And then they started to realize, well, these are setting on top of Playa sediments, you know, sediments that were built up during the Neolithic time. Uh, and so how did they get there? And so they, they had to get there from man. These are man-made objects, these megaliths. One of the possible links to Egypt before the pharaohs is that Napta Playa became climatically hyper-arid like it is today, around 3800 BC. It has not been lived at or used since. It has been assumed by historians that Egypt borrowed its complex society from Mesopotamia. However, it is now generally recognized that a process of social complexity is not diffused from one location to another, but rather develops locally. Thirty four hundred BC is when you see uh, pre dynastic cultures building up on the Nile Valley, just a hundred kilometers east of Napta Playa. If that's the case, then a lot of the great dynastic Egyptian stuff we're all familiar with had some aspect of origin in the Napta Playa people's cultural development. Dr. Nicole Dueck is an Egyptologist who lectures at the British Museum and at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. By strange coincidence, she happened to be at Napta Playa on the same day as our team. From what I understand from her, she also believes that this could be the source of 